Hey everyone, this is day three of part two of Forbidden Emotions. And I did a What Are Forbidden Emotions um, on the first round of this, but I want to read out of the book. And then I want to talk about blame. Um, and I'm going to take my glasses off when I'm done reading so that you don't have all that glare. But so this is a uh, page 84 of Forbidden Emotions, The Key to Healing. So what are forbidden emotions? We have learned there are good and bad, right and wrong emotions. Anytime you tell yourself you should not be feeling whatever you're feeling, you are facing a forbidden emotion. You subconsciously or consciously reject these emotions and therefore feel you should resist or get over them quickly. This rejection creates more resistance, which elevates both the frequency and intensity with which you feel the forbidden emotions. Feelings do not just disappear into thin air if you don't feel them fully. They get buried inside of you, and they have a way of coming out when you least expect it. Hey, Lori, often at an inopportune time, um, physical signs of forbidden emotions. Physical cues can determine if you are experiencing a forbidden emotion. Let's use crying as an example. When an emotional response involves crying, it often concerns the emotion of sadness. Pay attention to the next time you cry in front of someone. Notice what you do physically. Likely you try to stop yourself from feeling this emotion by gulping holding your breath, biting your lip, or any other way you can suppress your emotion. And there's a brilliant scene as in the movie Ordinary People. It's a powerful illustration of this physical suppression. This scene takes a little over five minutes. And I walk through, sorry, all of a sudden I got a phone call and a text at the same time. Um, so, and I walk through the scene, which I won't do here, but um, it's a, there's a fabulous scene in Ordinary People where um, Donald, it's an old movie. For those of you that are younger, I'm probably dating myself, but it's a perfect scene um, about this. And I walk through it in the book where Donald Sutherland's character is talking to his wife about their, their marriage and realistically ending it. And you see Mary Tyler Moore, who is this very suppressed woman throughout the entire movie. That is a fantastic movie to watch if you want to see somebody. And Mary Tyler Moore, it's like she's phenomenal in her acting job of how she constantly is suppressing emotion and, and not allowing herself to express it. Um, I mean, there's scene after scene. If you want to see a fantastic movie, that really displays what I would call forbidden emotions and the suppression of those emotions, watch Ordinary People. It's phenomenal. And Mary Tyler Moore's character in particular. So that's um, what it is. And I, I wanted to, um, I'll take these off for now. What I, when I wanted to talk about today, I was, I was listening to the recording of a call and Eckhart Tolle talks about um, this idea of blame. And in, in this idea of blame, and this is where I see this gets mixed with the law of attraction, where we end up, I, I attracted this, I, I attracted this, I caused this, that whatever's happening in my life, the illness, the, the bad marriage, the, the whatever, it, the bad business, it's my fault, I've created it. And Eckhart Tolle, and I love this, and I'm totally paraphrasing here, he says, what if you could look at everything that happens in your life as something that's there to help you? Basically, you, you on a soul level, it's there for you because you chose it to help you evolve. And I've, when I recently heard this, him saying that, I'm like, oh my God, like I, I didn't know he had said that in that way, but I was like, that's so perfect. Because that's something I would say that I've awakened to too when we can sort of step out of the madness of, hey, I, I attracted this, I caused it, I did this. It's more self-blame. It's just more ways to double down on ourselves, to blame the hell out of ourselves. Like, you know, I, I broke my fingernail. What did I do to create that? You know, I had a car accident. What did I do? What was I thinking to create it? 
And if you think about and feel the energy around that, ugh, ugh, it's so oppressive. It's so oppressive. And then what we end up doing is walking around in life terrified of everything that happens because we think it's our fault and we're to blame for it. So there's two, so that's the first side of blame is learning to release self-blame and how I would tap on that is go into the blame. It's my fault. I mean, I attracted this. I made this happen. It's my thoughts. They're not aligned right. So that's one. And that's what I want to do today for ourselves to help release the blame. And in the converse, I believe when we're upset with someone, it's really sort of what I was talking about yesterday when we're hurt by something somebody did, we need to go to blame of the other. We need to go into that blame in a safe and healthy way and tap through that, God, they hurt my feelings. God, they did this to me. And go into the blame because that's what releases it. So that may sound like, wait, that's kind of, she's talking out of both sides of her mouth. But for the self, we're, I have yet to meet someone, unless they're narcissistic, and is completely devoid of any sort of self-correction, inward journey, I have yet to meet anyone who doesn't overly blame themselves. They take it on. And then what happens is likely is then they have someone typically in their life that will take responsibility for nothing, less than nothing. And that's usually a mirror and a pattern that they saw happen in childhood. Nobody, no adult around them took responsibility for anything. You hear it in the language, at least. I'm 58, so you hear in the language of growing up, like children should be seen and not heard, and be a good girl, be a good boy, you know, be pleasing, don't rock the boat, all that energy. So of course we go to like, everything's our fault. I blame myself for everything. So there's two ways to work with blame, with tapping. If it's someone else, that you're upset with if you're dealing with someone, let's say someone that never takes responsibility or never apologize or rarely ever does, it, it's that you wanna go into that, oh God, they never apologize, they're the worst. Like that, that's the way to tap through that. Probably rant, tap that out. God, they're impossible, they never apologize, they never take ownership. God, and whatever it does, does it enrage you? Does it sadden you, whatever your unique emotional experiences for that to go into that because then it's like all of a sudden it's like the fever all of a sudden the fever breaks all of a sudden the blame just breaks you're like okay yeah they're clearly a wounded person and they can't go there now you might have to go back to that again and again if there's someone that's in your life consistently and know that it's it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress to go, oh God, I just got hooked again. You know, oh, I got hooked again. That's okay. That's a part of me. And then that's when we can go to the child. Go, it's okay, baby. It's okay you got hooked again. Of course you did. You learn this early on. So that's one aspect of that. Could actually probably do that tomorrow. But what I want to do today is the self-blame. It's like everything's my fault. That car accident I had my fault. The shitty relationship that I chose is my fault. You know, that my bank account's my fault. My business or my my not having a career I love, that's my fault. I attracted it. I'm, I'm thinking the wrong thoughts. I'm not, you know, aligned properly. It's It's so exhausting. It's so exhausting. And that's why I love... I'll have to find the exact quote, but when Eckhart Tolle talks about what if you could look at every, welcome, every experience that happens in your life and it's there for your soul's growth. And I, I often say it's your, there for your evolution. And when I woke up from the nightmare of everything is my fault, I've attracted everything into my life, even the finger splitting, it's all my fault. It is, it's waking up from the freaking nightmare of self-blame. So let's tap. <laughs> Karate chop. Even though I blame myself for anything and everything, my stubbed toe, 
Oh, I wasn't paying attention. I choose to acknowledge I feel this way now. Even though I can blame myself for anything and everything. That car accident that happened. There's something really wrong with me. Because of all the shit show that's in my life. It's my fault and I'm to blame. Is that true? I choose to honor all of this now. Even though I can blame myself for anything and everything, every single thing that's in my experience I attracted it to me. What if there's another way to see this? And go to the eyebrow, it's all my fault. I'm to blame. I haven't yet fixed. That one thing that would help me align with a better way of being. And if I could just find that thing that has me attracting all of this wrong, It would all be so much better. But what if that's really part of the problem here? Is I can make myself wrong. Blame myself. everything that shows up for me. And what if there really is another way to see this? What if I could consider that everything that's showing up in my human experience here is not because I'm misaligned, not because I'm attracting it wrong, not because I gotta fix that one thing and then this will all change for me. What if everything that's in my experience really is for my soul's evolution? And what if that would help me release so much of the resistance around, it's all my fault. As if I don't blame myself enough already. What if I could consider opening to the experience that's in front of me with new eyes and a new way of seeing this and telling myself this 
might be divinely appointed. This could be for my soul's growth and evolution. And what if that could help me see this so differently and start to release the punishing self-blame that I end up accosting myself with. Because I learn to treat myself the way I was treated. And what if this could be the beginning of waking up from this nightmare, unhooking from this madness, and opening up to a greater possibility here that's lighter and freer every day. And then I find I blame myself a lot less and accept and even love myself more. So take a breath. Um, let's see who's here. Lori, Marsha, Linda, Diane, Kathy. So that's who I see has been here. Um, if anyone else is here and I can't see you, hello to you. And um, I do I do talk about this a lot. And again, I think it's, um, you know, I, I, I listen to that on the, the recording of this call and I was like, oh my God, that Eckhart Tolle, I love that he said that too because we just can be so, it's, it's just like a pandemic to blame ourselves. So if you found this helpful, great. And if you missed the first part of this, you can go back and listen to that if you like. And then we'll see you back here tomorrow with day four. And that's it for now. And Grace always uh, likes to come and be a part of this. Take good care. Bye for now.